Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to use Async to hit and download data from multiple APIs at the same time. Then we are going to convert the JSON responses that we receive from the API into PySpark data frames and save the data into the database. The purpose is to create tables that would contain the data in the original format. Actually, we are going to use the same API, but every time we are going to get the data in different format. In our example, we are going to download a list of cocktails by ingredients, a list of cocktails by type, a list of cocktails by category, and a list of cocktails by glass. Bear in mind, we are going to hit the API multiple times by passing all the parameters we have stored on this list. The first list contains the ingredient parameters, the second list the type parameters, the third list, the category parameters, and the last one, the glass parameters. Here we have the URLs. This is the API URL here, and we pass as parameter all the ingredients we have stored on this list, the IDs list. And then the same for the second URL, and the third URL, and the fourth URL. So one URL for each API, S actually same API for each uh, but we are getting the data in different format and here we are using list comprehension to form the complete URL with the parameters and of course we need to pass those URLs here those lists that we created with the complete, your, uh, complete URLs to the main function and use a syncio.run because that's how you run async here. If you are on Windows, you have to use async here dot set event loop policy a and open parenthesis async here Windows selector event loop policy if only if you are on Windows. Now here in our main function, we can use star and args and this will actually instead of writing all the lists that we are passing as parameters we just use star args and that will create a tuple that contains four lists. Let me show you that. So if I save and run, we will see that this args here actually is a tuple and it includes the four lists that we passed as, uh, as parameters. You see here, it's a tuple. It starts from here and it contains four lists right so this is instead of using uh, you know instead of specifying all the parameters one by one if you have multiple parameters you can use args so if you want to get the first the first element the first list in this case then you have to to select args zero the io args one etc etc now let me comment this in again. I will explain the code now. We are using a try cuts statement for every exception. Of course, you need to specify the exception here. I put a generic exception, but in production code, you have to specify the exception. And then we are using the AIO HTTP module. This is the async module and we create a client session for each api we have to create its own function of course you can make a more generic function and manipulate the data there so you don't have to rewrite the same code i just use multiple functions here for to demonstrate the example but you can make it more generic if you want now you let's see the first function it's the download ingredient list we are going to download all the ingredients, a list of ingredients based on the parameter we passed, right? And we can do that concurrently, actually hitting multiple APIs simultaneously using a syncio. Of course, we need to create tasks for each API, and we can do that by creating a this function, download ingredient list, which is an async function, as you can see here. Remember, when you're you when we are using async, we have to use the async keyword in front of the definition of a function. 
and here we need to create task and use pass those you know use this function and pass those parameters that for the function and I'm using list comprehension here because we need to create multiple tasks based on the parameters we have on the list so the complete on this list here acts zero that would give us our ingredient list so for each ingredient on the list we need to create a task and pass the parameters in the function and I'm doing the same for uh, different functions here I create tasks then for the type list and then for the category category list and then for the last one the glass list and of course in order we created those tasks but we haven't actually executed those tasks what we need to do here is to type I wait which is the keyword that we have to wait for the function to complete when we were we are using a syncio and then we have to use a gather and pass all those lists and actually unpack um, our list tasks so we unpack the task ingredient list we unpack the task alcoholic list the task category list and the task glass list right and if let me run this and you will see what we get what we get when we download the ingredient list of course before I run it I want to show you that you need to use inside the function we have to actually perform a get request like like we have in the requests library dot get it's the same for a syncio session dot get we would we provide the URL SSL false and then we have to wait for the JSON response for the response from the API we we need to use a sync again before we open the session and let's run that and print the results that we are getting from the API give it a second so here as you can see we receive here we are we have this JSON object that has all this information right drinks and then a list and then a dictionary and it contains the drink name the thumbnail and the ID drink now imagine this is the results look the same for all the API's but for each API we want aside from the information that the API response has we want an extra column and we want an extra column to specify like you know if it's the category if it's an alcoholic drink or non-alcoholic drink or the ingredient is gin or anything else and basically we can we know that based on the list the parameters we have provided so the, f the list of ingredients would be gin so we want to add this gin as a as an extra column and that would be a static variable just because we want to know if uh, the ingredient is gin for those um, you know for those drinks or vodka or whiskey etc etc so we are going to use those parameters here as an extra column in our PySpark data frame and we are going to save this data into the database the first thing we need to do here is to create we have to import PySpark session from PySpark.sql the database here this is the database connection so it's this one here it's like a custom class that I have uh, defined here and it has all those parameters on how to connect to the uh, database you can do the same I use the same uh, Python file for most of my examples and I create I import the Python file here and I create an instance of the database in PySpark you can set the log level 
like this spy spark dot spark context dot set log level error so it will only print if there is an error uh, or something critical it's not going to print any warnings or info right if you set it like that and then we have to write to the database but we can also write to the database not using the JDBC module like here so if I use my, my instantiated class and then I can write JDBC and save the data into the database but for this example I want to show you that instead of using JDBC you can use PySpark and here we pass all those options that's the information that helps PySpark in order to um, in order to log on to the database and be able to save the data so it's da data frame which is df dot write dot format and then jdbc and then we provide the options here the url the driver the table name username password and then the mode there is override mode there is save mode as well you can do whatever you want i use append for this example so it's going to append all the PySpark data frames. If you use override, it's going to delete the previous data frame. So we are, if we use override, we are going to see only the latest data from the last data frame. Now, as you can see, I use this function beneath. So here, I printed the results. You will see the URL, the full URL, but remember we want the parameters that we passed in the URL and we can get those parameters at the end by parsing the URL using the URL parser this is a library the URL lib dot parse and from this URL lib library you have to import that we import the URL parse and the parse QS you will see why so here we parse the URL and if I print this here past URL you will see what that gives and then we want the query parameter that we pass in the URL let me print that too and you will see the capture value let's run this and here you will see the first this is the full URL then when we parse the URL, we are get a parse result object with all those attributes, and you will see that there is a query parameter here, and it has our value, our parameter that we passed in the URL. We can get that by using the parqs and pass the query parameter, and then the i here, which is the identifier, and it that will give you a list so you have to take the first element of that list and this is how we get the capture value then the next step is to actually create a data frame and you can do that by using the results we get from the JSON response we select the drinks um, identifier and the drinks key actually and then we provide the column names and it's going to create a PySpark data frame we add an extra static column called ingredient and this is and this is where we pass the capture value and lead here that you have to import it from the PySpark SQL functions that means that this is a constant it's not going to change it's just a string and then we have to call the write to database function this is uh, it's going to call this function here pass the data frame the table name and it's going to save the data into the database without using you know the instance here that we created uh, using JDBC and perform an insert query instead we use the PySpark option here to write to the database and to append the data now let me remove the prints and this is how you create a PySpark data frame so we parsed 
the response from the API, then we got the last query parameter in the URL and we create the PySpark data frame and then a new column with a constant value which is the parameter value that we passed and we write the data into the database. We can do the same for the rest of the APIs, it's the exactly the same logic. You can make the code more generic of course and use one function instead of four uh, that I have here. For and you will see, let me move to the SQL developer and I will show you the tables. As you can see on my screen, I'm in the SQL developer, I have the ingredient table open, one of the four tables. You can, there are four columns, one is for the ID, one is for the drink name, one for the thumbnail and one for the ingredient. Remember the last column is the, uh, is the column we created in PySpark which has constant values and actually are the, uh, the URL parameter that we passed. And the reason we did that and we added this column is because we, now we know uh, what type of ingredient uh, is in this drink. For example, if you query this table and say, give me all the uh, drink names that contain this uh, ingredient, let's say gin, it's going to filter based on this column. The same with the glass uh, table. As you can see, we have the same columns plus the extra one, the glass type, and you can filter the data here as well the category uh, table uh, and the type table etc etc so now that we have added this extra column we are able to filter the data and we are also able to join all those tables based on the ID let me do a quick recap so what we did here was first to initially provide all the parameters that we want to hit uh, with those the API and download the lists based on those parameters. Then we used list comprehension to form the full, the complete URL and use asyncio to run the main function. And inside the main function, we unpacked the arguments here using, uh, you know, the index and create tasks based on different functions. And here we used asyncio.gather to actually execute all those tasks simultaneously and in, uh, inside the class uh, the function those functions we download the data from the api the json response we pass the url we get the parameter the query parameter that we ourselves provided before of course there are many ways of doing that but just i wanted to show you how to use url parse here and we created a PySpark data frame. We added a constant column with uh, this with column option and we wrote to the database. Now, why you want to use PySpark and non pandas? As I mentioned in this example, it would be better if you use pandas, but PySpark actually is uh, the new pandas on the cloud and almost all the companies have moved to the cloud. So you need to know PySpark as well as Pandas. And in a nutshell, this is how you, uh, you know, you hit the API, you download the data, you parse the data, and you create a PySpark data frame and you save the data into the database. If you like the video, click the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.